so good evening everyone i think most of my slides are repetition of the slides of the previous speaker so i'll be discussing regarding the mechanism of resistance to ros1 and what are the possible therapy that can be given post resistance in non small cell lung cancer so this is one of the repetition we know that 1 to 2% of the ros1 uh, of the non small cell lung cancer they are ros1 positive and once uh, activated ros1 kinase activates the shp2 uh, phosphatase and up regulates map k erg pi3k and jack stat signaling pathway which ultimately leads to cell growth and promotion so as discussed in the by the previous speaker that cd4 uh, 74 ros1 is the most common fusion partner and that occurs in around 40 to 45% of ros1 rearranged non small cell lung cancer so apart from cd74 there are many other fusion partners that can be found so there are two presently approved drugs for ros1 the one first is crizotinib second is entrectinib so previous speaker has discussed it beautifully so this data has also been discussed we have maximum data for maximum data is for uh, is for crizotinib the uh, median follow up of uh, 62.6 month the os is around 51.4 months so with uh, uh, with the next approved uh, drug again this slide this uh, uh, trial has been discussed the median os is not yet there with entrectinib but the median pfs is around 15.7 months so entrectinib has a better cns penetration that we know for sure with the median follow up of 15.8 months the overall response rate is around 67.1% and the duration of response is 15.7 the cns overall response rate is around 79.2% so we should remember that entrectinib can effectively cross the blood brain barrier acting on pre uh, pre existing cns lesions and preventing or delay the onset of mets however we should know that there is no activity against the known ros1 resistance and the common ros1 resistance mutations like l2026m g2032r and d2033n and it is not advisable to give uh, entrectinib after once the patient has progressed on crizotinib so there are four basic mechanism of resistance i think which is common for all the tumors the first is the on target or the intrinsic resistance the second is activation of bypass signaling pathways or uh, off target or extrinsic resistance third is inadequate cns penetration and fourth is phenotype change so the on target resistance means that uh, the secondary point mutation develops within the ros1 kinase domain that occurs in around 50 to 60% of the patient the most common and the earliest one detected is ros12032 r mutation so other secondary mutations include d2033l1951 uh, and ros1 independent mechanisms like mutations in uh, kit proto oncogene uh, kit uh, proto oncogene and beta catenin have also been detected so that is a off target mechanism so this slide is trying to show that what drug can possibly act in these resistant mutations so the important point to highlight is that in the g2032r mutation you can see that cabozantinib has some activity there is no activity of entrectinib and uh, there is no activity of lorlatinib so two possible drugs that can act on the most common mutation they are uh, cabozantinib and uh, ripotrectinib the other common mutation l2026m you can again see that entrectinib and lorlatinib has no activity the possible activity can be shown by ripotrectinib or cabozantinib so activation of bypass pathway uh, it is a lesser common mechanism of action and retrospective studies have shown that it accounts for around 42 to 44% of the crizotinib resistant ros1 rearranged non small cell lung cancer so the uh, bypass pathway includes egfr met her2 keras braf mec kit and nf1 so if uh, the patient develops a uh, bypass pathway then the treatment is either a combination or it uh, depends on the uh, activation pathway the third mechanism is intracranial fa failure i think that has been discussed that uh, that that crizotinib has a limited blood brain barrier penetration because it's a substrate of p glycoprotein and cns progression to uh, to crizotinib reflect a pharmacokinetic failure rather than a true biological resistance the cns content, uh, concentrations are usually low so in these uh, patients with only cns progression the novel ros1 inhibitor can be offered like uh, lorlatinib or uh, like entrectinib 
So if a patient has an isolated CNS match, then novel ROS1 can be offered. Phenotypical changes include two main type that is EMT change, epithelial to mesenchymal transition, or and the second common is the small cell uh, transition. So these patients should receive the standard treatment as per the uh, the change. So how do we overcome resistance? I think that has been discussed that we need to do NGS in both liquid and solid tumor if it's possible. And depending on the resistance mechanism, uh, we can offer the treatment for a uh, for a CNS only progression. Then a, a better uh, ROS1 inhibitor can be given for a bypass uh, pathway. We need to combine ROS1 with the targeted TKI. Chemoimmunotherapy also remains a possible treatment option, and according to the phenotypic change or bypass activation pathway. So this is a case study which has shown that in patient who had. Uh, progressed on on crizotinib with a G2032R mutation that patient was treated with a chemotherapy regimen then once the patient progressed then the, then there was loss of the previous mechanism of resistance and the patient was rechallenged with the, the TKI that is that is crizotinib and the patient had a good confirmed partial re response when the patient was rechallenged also the response was around 41.2% so there are certain drugs that are not approved as of now so one is seritinib. Seritinib does not work in those patients who have previously received crizotinib. Repotrectinib, there is only phase 1-2 data. It is a promising drug, but it is still not approved. The PFS is re uh, remarkable, 24.6 months. And it works in the, uh, the common mutation like G2032R. In fact, it is the only TKI that uh, has not shown resistance to uh, is acts uh, on the, the common G2032 mutation and it has a better CNS profile also. So this is a Trident 1 study of repotrectinib. You can see that there, it has shown remarkable response. The overall response rate is around 93%. And the common side effects include dizziness, altered taste and uh, constipation. Other drug that is not approved but is promising, it is lorlatinib. So lorlatinib can be given in those patients who, who have CNS only progression or who have oligo progression. So the data is of median PFS is 21 months and those patients who had received prior crizotinib, it is known to work uh, uh, not as good as uh, repotrectinib but the median PFS is 8.5 months. So it's important, important that it does not work uh, in G2032R uh, mutation. So the overall efficacy, you can see that even in the patient who were previously treated with crizotinib had a median PFS of, uh, of around nine months. And lorlatinib also has a better intracranial efficacy. So this is a, a real world data which is showing the activity of lorlatinib in the patients who were previously treated with ALK and ROS1. So in this around 71% were ALK and 29% were uh, ROS1. You can see that the response rate was also there uh, if lorlatinib was given in the second line. The response rate was around 54% and the PFS was around 13 months. So on the right hand side you can see that the graph the PFS was a uh, 7.1 in ALK and in ROS1 it was around 11 months. The OS was also better. So lorlatinib can be given in second line but we need to understand what is the uh, the mechanism of resistance before we can plan lorlatinib. The other upcoming drug that is not yet approved but is showing promising result is talitrectinib. So talitrectinib has shown a median PFS in TKI naive patient of around 29.1 months. And those patients who had received prior TKI, the median PFS is around 14.2 months. And those patients who had received two prior uh, ROS1 TKI is 4.1 months. So it has also shown to overcome the resistant, uh, resistance mechanism of uh, to ROS1 G2032R. And it has shown a response rate of 33% in those patients who were previously treated with TKI. So another uh, TKI in the pipeline is brigatinib. So in the brigatinib study, around three patients were ROS1. So uh, one patient was crizotinib naive and had a partial response. So it should also, we should understand it does not uh, act on the common mutation mechanism. So cabozantinib, as I discussed, uh, there is a phase two data that, that uh, it can act on the common mutations like G2032R and D30, uh, uh, D2033N. So once we do the NGS and we know what is the resistance mechanism, then we can plan our next line of treatment. The PFS ranged from 4.9 to 13.8 months. So another standard treatment, uh, not exactly standard, but can be a possible treatment after the failure of targeted therapy includes either chemotherapy or combination of chemo plus IO that we used in uh, other uh, patients who are uh, 
negative for any actionable mutation. So it is known that uh, pemetrexate based chemotherapy for ROS1 fusion positive tumor, it is associated with a better response rate and a longer PFS. And the potential role for combination uh, uh, needs, to be, uh, needs to be evaluated, but it is definitely one of the possible treatment options. So, so this is a wonderful slide that I have taken from a paper. So it is shown how uh, should we manage ROS1 positive patient. So if the patient has a CNS disease, then, uh, then the first line should be enterectinib. And if the patient is symptomatic, then RT should be offered. If there is no CNS disease, then patient can be offered crizotinib. And on a subsequent line, based on the type of progression, suppose there is CNS only progression, then a novel TKI, which has a better CNS uh, uh, penetration can be offered, like lorlatinib. And if the patient is symptomatic, then RT should be given. If there is systemic progression, then we should do a liquid and a tumor biopsy. And based on the type of mutation, we should plan our treatment. The most common is G2032R. So if that is the mutation, then either cabozantinib or chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy. If there is non-G2032R uh, uh, mutation, then lorlatinib is probably a better of the treatment option. If there is a bypass pathway activation, then that uh, pathway activation treatment and combination with a ROS1 TKI. If there is CNS or systemic oligoprogression, then we can give RT and continue with that treatment. Uh, uh, treatment. So to summarize, there are several uh, major resistance mechanism that uh, that has arisen due to oral TKI that can lead to treatment failure. And we have novel next generation TKI that have been developed to uh, to overcome those resistance. And intracranial activity efficacy against the ROS1 mutant kinase and testing combination therapies for the bypass signaling resistance pathway, they may be keys for prolonging disease control and also to improve survival. And it's important that we find out the type of mutation for that a tissue or a blood based or both uh, NGS can help to identify the resistance mechanism to ROS1 TKI. And it may be considered after tumor progression so that we better select on, on the basis of whatever treatment options we have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajit. Uh, we now come to the end of this session and we'll move on to our sponsored session. So for the first session sponsored by AstraZeneca, I would like to invite Dr. Alok Goyal. He will be speaking on immunotherapy in combination with uh, chemotherapy in first-line non-small cell lung cancer. 